Okay, so um, who hit Chandler? Did you just start the recording button? Yeah. Okay, Mark, we're official. We are being recorded. Okay, Anthony, can you hear me? I'm not sure he's... He, he may be in his check-in meeting, so he's connected. The, the three dots you see under his name that say like connecting to audio means that he hasn't joined the audio with this, so he probably is in a different meeting, and it's just oh, like... Oh, I see. I see. Waiting. <laughs> Okay, I just have to wait for another member in order to. Uh, can I use Jim? I'm wondering. Uh, <clears throat> why not? Okay. Uh, Jim, did you get a chance to look at the minutes at all? <laughs> okay. Then I'm uh, I'm looking for a motion then to uh, pass the minutes as presented. So, yes. You're you're on mute. Okay, you're on mute. All in favor? Uh, aye. Uh, aye. Okay, so pass. The minutes have passed. Thank you. Now we can get started on our digital channel discussion. Tim? Okay, well, I, I assume everybody got the um, email I sent out on Friday, just uh, you know, with a little bit of an order uh, here so we can keep uh, time parameters on the meeting. So um, uh, John has been uh, the most patient of the team since Instagram was the last to launch. So um, for that, John, I'm going to allow you to update everybody on Instagram as it has launched and I'll allow you to go first. So please tell the group what we're up to. All right. So for the Instagram, um, we currently have four posts up and um, it actually already has uh, close to 40 followers. Um, and in that, um, most of them are either small businesses um, or people in Wallingford or around Wallingford. So that's, that's a good base to start off with is um, small businesses that are finding the account um, kind of uh, naturally or um, people in Wallingford just finding the account and um, we're actually starting to get tagged in posts as well which uh, shows that the accounts um, gaining some traction people are starting to, to find it on their own and tag um, uh, it, it in their posts um, so with that, I'm going to continue to keep following um, s small businesses as well as trying to get out um, around probably one post a week um, to kind of keep keep people in the loop and keep them um, updated so they're not kind of forgetting about the account um, when, when they see a new post. Um, and in following uh, new small businesses or people in Wallingford, that's just going to uh, keep growing the the uh, attraction for the account and then from there it's going to be able to grow more naturally uh, than it is now but I think it has a, a very good start where I started off by following um, a, a few small businesses and from there it was kind of just gaining natural traction based on the people that I had followed and then who who they um, who followed their accounts so from there I'm just going to keep doing the same thing where I follow more small businesses and then um, their followers or people that also are interested in their account are finding finding ours as well. And then in there, we'll be able to gain more followers. And I think that it'll start going at a faster rate as well, which is which is going to be very good. And that's, that's kind of all that I have. So, John, um, a month from now, you're saying that um, you know, you're the Instagram expert. You have built audiences into the... I think didn't you have over a million follows in your audience or something? Yeah. So, so you, you are very well attuned to growing audience. So you say we're off to a good start. Yeah, I, I think it's definitely off to a good start, especially since it's uh, very natural growth. I mean, with, with something that's so targeted, it's so hard to kind of grow it like very fast because you want people in that in that target audience. You don't want just random people from um, outside of the area that you probably wouldn't even know what Wallingford is because those people aren't gonna be um, an influential mar uh, audience for you. So I think that kind of growing slower, but getting getting a better um, a better audience is kind of what we have to do in order to gain an, an audience that's gonna be more effective and who we're trying to reach. So a month from now, John, what's a, what's a good number? Um, I'd say 100 probably, 100 people that are, um, Wallingford or uh, towns outside 
um, kind of everybody that's that's related or even more. Very good. And, and yeah. John, go ahead. Somebody had a question. Yeah, I'm sorry, I had a question. Yeah. On your on your monthly um, uh, staff report, you normally log call-ins and so forth at the end, and um, you, you have four categories. Will this, can this be added to that uh, as we grow, just so we can watch it? The, the, you know, the entire co uh, commission can watch it? Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Have followers, you have contacts, et cetera. Yeah, for sure. Um, other questions, comments? John, um, was there, what, what should I be doing on this end to try to grow that audience? Um, or do you have, you pretty much have the ball? Um, following some people that, that you know is, um, you're suggested, like people that you know that you can see have uh, accounts that um, either you know or you know of to kind of just keep expanding especially if you could start with people that um, you personally know, because um, from there it'd be easier to find people that will d uh, definitely follow us back. Um, and then from there, it's just gonna be natural growth. And is that something that the commissioner should do as well? Um, Committee members or? I'm, I mean, Possibly. I mean, it's all it's all relative because either way, um, we don't want to be following so many people. We kind of want to make the people that we're following kind of um, a smaller amount than who our followers are. Okay. Um, so to make the account look, look professional and um, not like overdone, if that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Very good. Anybody have any questions of John? Great job, John. Thank you. Nice start. Very nice start. Thank you. All right, we're ready to move on. Mark, I don't know where uh, Rob or uh, Patricia are. No. I'm not here either, so we can continue. Oh, yep. Yeah. Um, all right, Shay, you're up with email. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm on my phone right now because I can't get into my computer. So just, I don't know, can you guys see me or hear me right now or no? Yeah, uh, I can yeah. hear you for sure and occasionally see you. Your name's popping up now, but that's about it. Okay, yeah, because I just have to look at my notes. Um, my A key on my computer is broken and that's in my password, so. <laughs> um, okay, so for email marketing, um, since we last met, I sent out three emails since then. Um, one was about the hubcap, one was about Wallingford Restaurant re Week, and one was about the PPP loans for small businesses. Um, so for the hubcap email, uh, um, we had a total of six clicks across all groups. And then for the Restaurant Week, we had a total of 29 clicks across all groups. And then for the PPP loans, we had a total of 10 clicks across all groups. Um, so those were, I was like pretty happy with those results. I think that some of them for the restaurant week, that was pretty good with a total of 29 clicks. Um, I definitely think that we could probably do better with the pub cap and the PPP loans um, with getting the amount of clicks up. So I don't know what that really entails other than um, kind of maybe like sending it to more people. Um, so in order to like send it to more people, I was thinking, so once we start messaging people through LinkedIn, um, we can try to acquire people's emails through that and target new people. So like if we're contacting somebody through LinkedIn and having a conversation with them, be like, oh, would you like to be added to our email list to like see opportunities in Wallingford um, or like our upcoming opportunities in Wallingford? Um, so that way we're able to grow our email lists and not just keep emailing the same people that we've been emailing. Um, I also added a link tree to the um, social media. So when you're looking on the email campaign and when you click on uh, follow us on social media, it brings you to a link tree page where you can click on either the Instagram or the um, LinkedIn from there. So it's an easier way for um, to connect like all of your social media platforms using one button. Um, so that's something that I added. 
And then um, I was also thinking of adding um, to every email, like any interest in moving your business to Wallingford, contact Tim Ryan and then put the phone number just so there's more of a call to action if you're wanting to like move your business to Wallingford and people know directly who to contact. Um, but that was it. So I don't know if anybody has any questions. Uh, Shay, how many, um, how many people are on the list? How, what's the, what's the count? Um, so there's different groups. So there's, um, an manufacturing group, real estate, other media. And I think that's it. So, um, for manufacturing, I don't have my, I don't have my numbers up yeah. right now. I want to say that manufacturing is probably like, I think manufacturing and re real estate are more of the bigger ones. I want to say with like around like 90 each and then other, I think I want to say has like 120. media is only like 20. Oh, so you're, you're under 300 and you got 29 clicks. That's actually really good. <laughs> yeah. You know, percentage wise. Yeah. If you told me the list was 5,000 and we got 29, that wouldn't be as, as impressive. Yeah, exactly. so, no, that's, that's good. And Shay, each time we've sent out the messages thus far, we've um, Shay and I communicate and we send it out to targeted lists. So, yeah, example, you know, if we're sending out something with PPP, we don't necessarily send it to government officials. Yeah. Um, you know, so we 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 target it. So, um, but you know, Shay brought it up, and we certainly recognize that the biggest opportunity here, and of course, perhaps across most all of the channels, but the biggest opportunity here is to update that email list. I mean, we just. Yeah. You know, for certainly COVID has pointed out of the, you know, 2,200 businesses that we have in Wallingford, you know, we have less than a thousand people on the list altogether. Yeah. Uh, and that many, most of those are not businesses. I mean, or many of them are not businesses. So just a, a huge opportunity. And um, I'll say again, that when we get that part-timer in this office, that's going to focus on these um, uh, social media marketing and, and, and marketing um, initiatives, that's that's going to be a huge part of it is just building that email list and we have resources for example the tax assessor's office has got emails for hundreds and maybe even thousands of businesses because it's the contact for you know that their their you know tax payments and so forth the health department's got emails for every single restaurant so you know we beyond that we should be merging our list with the chamber we should be merging our list with wci you know do a merge purge so there's just opportunities to grow this list all over the place. We just need to have someone that can focus the time on, on doing it and then, you know, be the quarterback on, on, on building that list. And then, you know, then when we send out, you know, messages and we can, we can just run, but we've got to get the list refined. I went through one of the categories last week, um, just out of curiosity. And, uh, there was actually, it was the economic development uh, list. We have a, we have a list of economic developers across the state of Connecticut. You know, five of them said, you know, retired, retired, retired. I mean, just it just needs to be cleaned up and updated. And it's just not something that uh, we've had the opportunity or the time to do. So anyway, we know that there's great things ahead on that uh, channel. Jim, there, there may be a, an opportunity we should talk to Joe to have Gary's group kind of get involved in this part of it, to be not necessarily make the phone call and, and do what, the actual going through the list, but be the coordinator for it in coordination with possibly the new person that you're hiring, but they can get started before that new person gets hired to lay out a plan. Okay, we're gonna go after the EDCs first. We're gonna go after these many businesses every month and have them give a report on that and, and be the conduit to it. Kind of like what they were doing when uh, we were looking for exit interviews from uh, businesses. Why did you leave Wallingford? And they took right. on that responsibility and did a good job, although there were many of them who were leaving Wallingford, so it wasn't a big job. But this may be something that we can talk to Gary and Rosemary about um, with the okay from Joe, of course, and then go from there. Very good. All right, Shay. Anything else? No, I think that was it for me. So in my, my very quick note taking, um, so you, you said that you were happy with the clicks. We sent out four messages, did I get that correct? Um, I think it was three. Three, okay. Um, 
and then you know updating email list is uh, is going to be critical to kind of gain some momentum. Uh, and then yeah. tell me again, you you mentioned adding call to action while I was writing. So tell me more. Say that again, please. Um, so kind of just I don't really know how many calls you've been getting or really what's been happening there, but just something to because I know our messaging is usually kind of just about like what's going on in Wallingford and like kind of just like like we had the restaurant week the ppp loans um so just kind of something that i mean our main goal is to get businesses to move to wallingford so i think that having like if you want to move your business to wallingford contact tim ryan would be beneficial because if people are looking at it and being like wow wallingford's doing a great thing see that um maybe it'll be like push them more to call you okay all right, so I'll, I'll take a look, another look at the um, the template. I thought there was something on the bottom of the template that had a call to action in it, but it uh, has the phone number. But I think something more saying like more like um, kind of like in people's faces rather than something uh, that you for. Yeah, you want to use something that's going to be, <clears throat> you know, that's going to catch their attention. You know, and I know that the uh, Wallingford Electric, I think, will do kind of a, a cost comparison if you're doing business in another town and you want to see what your rates would be there. They do that analysis, don't they? Yes, they do. Yeah. yeah. So I think if you, you know, that's, that's a grab, right? So if you had a CTA um, saying, you know, how, you know, work with the EDC, do a cost comparison of your electric, you know, so, some, some clever way to say that, uh, that invites someone who's potentially thinking it's, it's, you know, they get something. You know, you, you know, in, in my business, we do white papers, you know, give somebody something to download, something of value. Um, those those CTAs get somebody who's maybe on the fence, well, maybe, you know, and, and it gets them to react. And that's what you want, that it will increase your clicks. So I think the uh, grab for the town um, to offer somebody to, hey, you know, work with EDC, we can somehow, um, you know, do an evaluation on your electric bill. That would be a great CTA opportunity. Yeah, I can definitely look into that. And Shay, to, to add something on the bottom is relatively simple, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. So um, to Anthony's point, I mean, Anthony, what if we quantified it by saying to find out how you can save forty percent on your electric bill? Yeah. Contact. Yeah. Yeah. You know, some pro so pro progressive offers ten percent on your auto insurance, and they get a lot of there you go. 40%. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, <laughs> um, I think maybe you introduced Walling for the Electric Division. So um, find out how to save up to 40%. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Geico says up to 10%. Is that right? So I don't find know. out how to save up to 40% um, on your electric bill through our publicly owned utility. Something that just doesn't make it sound like we're you know, we're using Eversource or something like that. So, yeah. And I wouldn't, I would, I would, you know, you could use a pop-up uh, while they're on the, uh, on, on the site or on the page, you know, there's, there's all kinds of things you could do to, you know, that's, that's the grab, you know, and it's uh, you're just kind of, you gotta, you're dangling a carrot and you want them to click and tell you who they are. So you can start a dialogue. It's really mm -hmm. the, the main goal. We can introduce Wally the Frog instead of the Gecko, and we'd be all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Shay, you're going to strengthen that call to action. Let's, um, you know, just jot something up. It's a, it's a quick sentence, but that okay. pop up um, idea, I like that as well. So, um, all right, you got to forgive me because I'm writing as we're going here. All right. Anything else, Shay? No, that's it. Very good. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. All right, Chandler, LinkedIn. Hello, everyone. Um, first off, we switched Brenna and Jack with, on the LinkedIn team. So now Brenna will be taking care of the sales navigator side on LinkedIn, and Jack will be handling Facebook. Um, but since our last meeting, we're now up to 176 followers. Um, which I think we were at like 160 last time, something around there. Um, but within the last 30 days, we've had 101 visitors to our page, 
and 62 new followers. And um, due to our, like from our messaging on Sales Navigator, uh, we've had about 18 link, cl link clicks, which um, if you look at like when people are clicking on the link and when we message our on Sales Navigator, um, they tend to be correlated. So it's uh, our Sales Navigator is beginning to work how we've intended. Um, and in total, we have about five posts on LinkedIn. So what is your thought so far? Is it, this is pretty good at this stage of the game or we got to get a little bit stronger here or what? I think that we're like, like John, we're in a good start, but I would like to have more people follow us from sales navigator because typically like they're not following us. They just click on our links and go to the, the Wallingford like page. So Callum and, and Sam's job has worked out, but it's not gone in vain. Uh, Chandler, are we, um, because with sales navigator, I think you can invite X number of people to follow your page uh, per week or per month. I think it's like 25 or something like that. Are we taking advantage of the, of the invites? I believe that we are like when, whenever we send out a message, it says like, we invite you to connect. Yeah, to you can. Yeah. It, it, and I do this. I try to be diligent to do it every week uh, to, to maximize the number. But um, you, in, in our case, if, if you had a list of, uh, I don't know, town companies, you could just do a, a search by the company and just invite, invite, invite and, and crank through. You know, Tammy, you can give a list of the bigger companies who in town we would want uh, them to follow us. And then just, you know, you go into Sales Navigator, pull up that company. And um, I would just start at the top. They usually give you the, the top and work your way down. But uh, people who or titles that would be, you know, potentially influential to have follow uh, our page and, and then just, uh, you know, be very diligent about inviting. In fact, that's something that your part timer could do as well. Excellent. Yeah, that seems uh, to be low hanging fruit. Uh, yeah, Chandler and, and Verna, just uh, and, and maybe just through a, you know, a, a a meeting, you know, a virtual meeting, we we can, you know, pull the screen up and and you can start, you know, look up Wallingford businesses, Verna, and just and we start going through and I'll say invite them, invite them, invite them, and just run through it, right? Yeah, we can make. Yeah, that's something we can that. easily do. I think. I, I'm still. I talked with Chandler and Jack this past Friday. So I'm still exploring sales navigator, learning the ins and outs. Jack showed me a couple of the tricks, um, but I think that's definitely something I can figure out. Great. And Anthony, I don't want to put you on the spot, but um, you know, um, Brenna, just know that Anthony uses sales navigator uh, professionally in his line of work all the time as uh, marketing director at Hops and Monster. So um, he knows the ins and outs has been re using it for a while. Um, Anthony, if, if Brenna has any specific questions, is it okay if she reaches out to you? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, so I do want to just take an extra second and acknowledge that um, we did, as Chandler announced, uh, do a little bit of a, a player trade, as I call it. Um, so Jack is now going to go on the, under the Facebook side. We've got Brenna that we pulled into the um, LinkedIn side. Uh, we do feel of all the challenge channels that we've established that LinkedIn is, is uh, we, we think our, our, our best opportunity for attracting businesses um, in other areas of Connecticut and beyond that geographical area that we've identified as um, not only New England, but uh, New York, uh, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. So, um, so Brenna is, is going to take over that initiative and um, learn more about sales navigator than she ever thought she would. Right? <laughs> so Brenna, anything to add at this point? Um, I don't think so. I think I'm just starting out learning it, getting a handle on it. Okay, great. All right. Do you have Anthony's uh, contact information in the event that you want to reach out? I'm pretty sure I do, but do you want to give it to me again, just in case? Yeah, it's uh, A B R A C A L E at Hobson Motzer, H-O-B-S-O-N-M-O-T-Z-E-R.com. And my cell is 860-302-0365.
Um, always better to text me. I could usually, even if I'm in a meeting, just get back and say, hey, I'll, I'll get back to you next. All right, thank you. Yep. Anything else, Chandler? No, not for me. Okay, we're good. All right, very good. All right, uh, next up is Callum and Samantha. So I know you thought you'd be sneaking out the door by now, but we just keep hanging <laughs> on to you. So, <laughs> but uh, anyway, at this point, um, if I may, just uh, before you uh, start, the last time we had met, we talked about that um, that photo uh, thing going across the website. Um, no one liked that, so we did meet with um, um, our, our vendor, and they had suggested that rather than take it out that we populate it with logos because they feel as if artistically that breaks up the text a little bit. It happened to be an idea, frankly, that I like because, you know, there's so many businesses in this town and quite often, you know, we, we highlight a few, but why not highlight more of them? So uh, I would ask that they are not doing anything yet with it uh, pending your, your consideration on that thought. So uh, Callum, you being the, design person, uh, what, what do you think? I think that having logos on a, on a slider definitely breaks a lot of normal web conventions. If you were to use logos to build credibility and kind of have a, um, have a section for logos, I would suggest that it absolutely should not be a slider. I don't think I've ever seen a, a logo slider on any other um, website, but I, I would maybe, agree with that. Yeah. But, um, so I, I wouldn't be against the idea of having a section or maybe a, a small grid, like a two by four of, of company logos that you feel best represent Wallingford and establish credibility that you think people will recognize. Um, however, I think that we should probably stick with the direction of doing away with the slider and maybe, um, revising that idea to, build in a, a grid or something for example i think we also talked about last time um we could add the logos next to the testimonials because a majority of the testimonials are coming from people from those businesses right so that's in, that's in the works as well um their one concern about that would be it was that that would make the text and the text the testimonial pretty small um but you know, I think uh, we you know we can do something with a with a smaller logo. So that's that's something that uh, has been introduced. The, if, it uh, help, if it would help, I I'd be happy to also make the the version of the mock up include the logos next to the testimonials in a way that wouldn't obstruct or detract from the rest of the layout. Oh, that'd be a great help. How I, about think I, I think it's something that they. Um, we don't necessarily have the ability to go in and do the, uh, we don't have the administrative rights. I know we've, we've given you the keys, Callum, so, um, but you can confirm that with us as to whether that's something that we can execute or whether you're, what are you talking about doing something like formatting it so we send it to them to do? I actually, I actually don't have any ability to edit the website um, at all. I, I remember that we had poked around in the editor just through um, uh, with one of your associates and we, we were sharing screens to be able to see what we were able oh, to do. Okay. So I actually, I can't go in and, and make any of the changes myself, but what I was suggesting is that, um, do you remember how I was using the static version of the mock-up to show you guys how the, the new landing page would be represented? Right. Um, so my, my suggestion was that I would then update the, the testimonial section to include a, a place for the logos and make that in a way that wouldn't detract from the layout or make the text too small as they were suggesting it might. Okay, I think that's a good idea. So you'll show us you'll show us a rendition artistically, I hand it to them to do it, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, and if, if you still like the idea of having, um, of replacing that slider with a, a section for, um, for company logos, we can, we can add that as well. But I think that um, as it stands, the, the slider definitely is a little bit still definitely detracts from the overall experience. So hang on a second. I'm trying to. Um... 
All right, so I think we're, we're uh, let's just talk about, um, so committee members, uh, team members. So you redesign the testimonials, adding a logo. All right, so we've got that part. Everybody's everybody good with that? Because it was uh, something that everybody asked about last meeting, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and now let's just talk about, so the, the sliders, let's just <clears throat> take the, the moving piece out of that. Now we've got a, um, a static strip, right? That breaks up text above and below, <clears throat> which was their point saying to have something that breaks up that text. But we all agree that it just didn't have any context. It kind of just floated there. Uh, so now we instead of having a, a slider, we're going to have, I don't know what you call it, a ribbon, whatever. We're going to have something there though, that will be populated with logos whose job will still be to break up the text, but it's, it's in a matter of us. Um, one of our pieces of marketing material says, you know, Wallingford's all about the company you keep, right? And it's a play on the word company, but um, to, to share or show, you know, some of the popular logos, some of the, you know, big brands, I think is, you know, has a place. So is, is that what you're suggesting, Callum? <laughs> More of a static piece in that spot? Absolutely. Yeah, that's okay. um I think that would look a lot better than having than having a slider if we still want to move forward with doing that. Yeah, another idea if you were going to keep the slider is to have an image, you know, not just the logo, maybe an image of the business. You know, the the all these businesses either will have a, you know, a, a storefront or something that would be, you know, interesting um visually versus just the logo. Um and you could if you wanted to evolve the website even further, you can click on and have a little profile um, of that business. Uh, uh, an idea that I had as I looked at it is, you know, if you wanted to highlight a business from time to time, or maybe you do one a month where you do a profile of that business uh, and you do that on an ongoing basis, you get a chance to interview the, the, um, the, the business who would get some free advertising out of it. And then uh, they would send everybody to, sh to and share and just spread word and it would draw people into your site. So I think if you could do something like that and you could do it from a slider, but on some level have a, uh, a you know, a business profile highlight, uh, a, you know, monthly highlight where you highlight a business. I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's a consistent steady way every month of inviting people to come to your site. I think that'd be a great idea. Maybe, maybe you have the logos in the ribbon and then yep. the highlighted business is either boxed out or something that sets it different from all the rest of the logos yep. that are in there. So yep. all you do is you click, you click that yep. box and boom, you go right to what you're suggesting. Yeah. And you could, you, you've got such a diverse group of business this, this month, we're highlighting a, a manufacturing company. This month, we're highlighting a new restaurant. This month, we're highlighting a, you know, it, it's, it's endless. And there's so many of them. You're never going to run out of, you're never going to run out of uh, opportunities to, uh, to, to do something like that. And then they kind of go in your blog archive um, where people will, you know, maybe reference them back, but you do that and you multiply that times 12 months and all the people that are going to, um, you know, the, that wow. will share because it's promotion for their business. So they're going to promote their business and at the same time, promote the EDC's website. So, you know, it's like that old shampoo commercial. They tell a friend, they tell a friend, they tell a friend and everybody knows. So yeah. I like the, I like the idea of having, it sounds like what you're talking about is almost like having case studies and yeah. having references yeah. to their experiences yeah. being within Longford. Yeah. I, I like the idea of, of doing that. Um, and I, I think that you're absolutely right. That there is a lot of shareability mm -hmm. um, and, and certainly it would give them free press and also establish uh, more relationships with their network. Yeah. I yeah. I would suggest though that it probably should be kept separate from having the from the logo banner. Just yeah, no, that, that's the, the yeah. convention. But, uh, but um, yeah, I think it's definitely a good idea. I I like to weigh in on this. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. The um, this could be tied in. I love this idea with it was uh, featuring different businesses, and I think this could be tied in very nicely to our uh, visitations every year, which are, these people may not realize we do. We do visitations to a variety of different companies every year. 
and the EDC and the accounting and the mayor, we go out and we visit with the companies and we, we try to, you know, establish a good rapport with, with different companies. And I think the, if that was featured like it was presented here, I think that would be terrific and shared well. Good point. You know, another um, a way to promote this is, you know, you're having the email blasts and if they're going out and you have a broad email list of uh, town businesses, one of the email blasts could be, um, you know, are you interested in having your business highlighted on the EDC website? People will sign up because I think, you know, you're always going to run the risk of why are you highlighting this business and not my business? So if you do this in an email blast, you send it out to everybody. Um, and then you kind of get a, you, know, you establish kind of a pecking order in the order that they were received. You have a methodical way to approach uh, who does what, and then you just uh, set out to, uh, to start creating. And, and over time, you're going to have great overview right there on the website, maybe in the blog or, or however you do it to, uh, to have a highlight of each of these uh, companies, kind of what they're doing, update them over the years. You, you know, something new pops in, they're going to come and say, Hey, can we promote this on, uh, on EDC? And it just, you know, becomes a resource. What you want the site to be for people in town is a resource, something that they can, you know, that it, it, it creates value for them. And if you do that, then you will have a very active website. Excellent points. Excellent points. So, Callum, um, can we hot link each logo? Yeah, we can. So, yeah, absolutely. Right. I think it's so. You, is that is that a decent idea or what? So, we, we, we that's something we want to do. Yeah, I, I think so. Again, um, I think that I, I think that the idea of having case studies for each of the companies that we're highlighting is a great idea. Um, I, I do want to reiterate that the, the logo grid um, should be kept separate from that just because yes. as a convention, they're, they're entirely different things. Um, however, uh, the, the logos can absolutely be linked to their websites, to the, um, to the relevant sites. And we can also move forward with, I can make, um, uh, a mock-up of what a thumbnail to a case study would look like on the site. Okay. So I'm, not, I'm not sure where are we at then with the strip. If Are we going to do the logos in the strip or we're not going to do it? That's going to be separate. I'm kind of lost on that one. We're, we're saying that we are going to do it, but it's going to be kept separate from the case studies. There, the, were there, two, there are two things that, um, as far as I'm aware of, we're moving forward separate with the logo strip or the grid. And then... Uh, there, I think there's question of what the, the case studies might look like, but um, I think that everyone thinks it's a good idea. Good. Okay, thank you. So my, my question now becomes, all right, so in our mind's eye, we can see the, um, the logo grid, as Callum refers to it. Um, my inclination, because I deal more with, again, office users, manufacturers, I mean, specific types of users is, you know, we have 2,200 businesses, so we can't have 2,200 logos in, in the logo grid. Um, so how do we start making the distinction as to who goes in and who doesn't? And when do you start getting calls from someone who says, hey, how come my logo is not in the grid? So equ equity is, is tricky. So typically, typically the value in having the grid is it provides social proof it builds instant credibility with people that come, come across your website and see that you have existing relationships or associations to companies. And so often you want to pick companies that have the largest outreach and the largest image. And so um, typically like you'll, you'll see on technology companies, they will use very large companies that use their, their products because they know that if a large company is going to use their products, they're likely to also be trustworthy. And so um, I, I think it's, you know, it, it wouldn't make as much sense to put like a, a local like restaurant, for example, over Amazon, if Amazon was one of the businesses. Uh, I, I think we definitely want to stay with, with larger companies. Yeah, and, and then to that point, Tim, I think when you have companies who are established in, in what I'd say 
kind of members of the community and in, in the sense that they're engaged, you know, it's a, you got to have some kind of a, um, some kind of a criteria for why they're there. If you look at what Albrecht does in town, if you look at what uh, Alcon does in town, there's a, there's a, you know, there are a number of uh, businesses who are very highly engaged, maybe not directly with the town, but in just community events and so on, they sponsor this. There's, there's all kinds of reasons why um, they would be noted. And if somebody squawks about it, you have a reason to say, well, this is the criteria and this is why. Might encourage a little bit more community involvement. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. All right, great stuff. So Callum, you, uh, you've got some work to do, right? Yeah, um, my question now is, uh, where do we stand on on implementing what case studies might look like? Is that something that we're moving forward with, or is that something that it sounds like it might need to be flushed out a little bit more? What's what's the next step for that? Yeah, I, I like the idea, but honestly, I think it's it's walk before we run. We simply don't have the resources to do it. I mean, let, so I think let's let's get the from my standpoint, let's get the um, the logo grid set. Um, let's see. We, and that just uh, the testimonials was the other thing. So you read right. the testimonials, get the logo grid set, and we can talk about the case studies at a, at a future meeting. So it's, I don't see it's anything that I'm going to get to. I'll tell you that. So. Great, and that's in place of uh, <laughs> of removing the existing slider. Right. 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 So okay, good to go. Great job. Oh. Um, Sam, yeah. Um, as far as traffic, web traffic uh, yep. tracking, can you talk to us about that briefly? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm actually going to share my screen really quick. Live from the McDonald's parking lot. Yes. Um, where are you again? <laughs> I'm in Jackson, Wyoming. <laughs> um, so before I want to get into the, the actual numbers of what we found on Google Analytics, um, my first question was, how are people getting to the website? And I know we just launched all of our um, social channels and I wanted to point out that the website link is taking our users or our followers um, to a different website from every channel. And that's generally not good speaking from the perspective of the landing page because it's going to cause some confusion and not give everybody the same information. And we've developed that landing page so that it has kind of all relevant information to someone who might be coming from one of the social channels. So as of right now, the LinkedIn link will take you to the landing page, which is great. But we also have the branded link, which is the plugin to wallingford.com. Um, and so that's also an option to use there. But as for Facebook, I actually wanted to point out when you click on the link, it takes you to this error page. Um, so. That's so we know. don't have a Facebook page right now. Oh. Um, so I'm actually not entirely sure you pulled that link from. Um, right here. Huh. I don't know who that is. Yeah. Though. All right. I will, I can go in and edit that and fix it in case we do pull up Facebook again. I'll fix that link. And I would also say if we don't have the, the Facebook page, try and either alter this one or take it down before you make a new one because yeah I so this is the profile that we had to link the page to the page has been unpublished itself okay. um that I will go through and try to unpublish the that as well so that okay. it's just not visible that actually that looks like you could add it as a connection and so I wonder if it's not a, a page but a, a person yeah it is that is so we to create a Facebook page, you have to create a human being to link it to. Um, mm -hmm. So we created oh. this human being. It looks like Pat Wolf is connected. <laughs> yeah. Um, but regardless, so that's just something to keep in mind when you're actually rolling out the um, the actual Facebook page. Just make sure that we, we recommend using this link for all of the um, bio links and especially for Instagram. So Instagram gets a little tricky because you only have one space to put a link um, and you can't, unless you're doing like a paid form of advertising, you can't really link back to a different web page um, that, or, or recommend that they go to your Instagram bio to click on that link. 
So when you click here, it takes you to a news article, which is great for um, getting the conversation going in the community and informing people what's going on. But because there's limited link space, we really need to use that as a way to drive people to um, the landing page as well. So what I would recommend there is using something like um, Linktree, which I'm not sure if, um, John, you're familiar with what yeah. that is. Yeah. yeah. So I would recommend doing something like that because you can have multiple posts with different calls to action saying, click on the link in our bio to read this article, click on the link in our bio to visit our website, click on the link for the phone number or something like that. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind, but we would um, like to see that all of the social profiles have the same link to the landing page just for consistency purposes. And that would also help improve our numbers. So if there's, an, if, if there's no questions there, I can go on to the actual numbers portion. Um, yeah, so hang on a second. John, so you good with that? You've got to make some changes, right? Yep. Okay, you're good? Yep, all good. And Brenda, you're going to go in and adjust Facebook? I literally just did. <laughs> so Facebook is fixed. <laughs> Facebook is fixed. All right. Great observation, Sam. Okay. And um, the LinkedIn, the LinkedIn was good, right? Yep. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to add, I have the LinkedIn tree for the email marketing, so I can give you the login, John, if you just want to use that the yeah. same. For the... Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, great. So the next thing I wanted to touch on was just some of the numbers that we've been seeing. Um, if you remember from a long time ago, one of the first uh, presentations Cal and I did, we found that the drop off rate for the benchmark time period, which we said was about a one month period between October and November, um, the drop off rate from the business page was about 72%. And only 2.4%. Oh, sorry. Only 2.4% of those um, of all 147 sessions were making it from the business page to the Y Wallingford page, and that was one of the more important um, things for that uh, trails for the, the users to follow. Just because the Y Wallingford page had all of the information, and the business page, which was the landing page, didn't have um, relevant information to any of that. So, what we and like we said, Tim, um, one of the biggest things that we can see improvements on is the number of phone calls you're getting. Um, and that is kind of where we're headed in terms of how we can measure success. And we can see that since we've launched, which I, we got the email from you on February 16th. So from third, about 30 days after that, we've seen um, four phone call clicks, which it's a limited data set, but it's still an improvement and mm -hmm. it's an indication. Um, and in terms of total sessions, we've actually increased to 288, which is really great. Um, and I wanted to point out that the, the number of people who moved from the business page to the Y Wallingford page has decreased. And that's probably because the information that is on the landing page is more relevant to what they're looking for. So they don't need to click around. Um, and in terms of the drop off. That's, that's deliberate, right? Yep. Um, yeah, so then the next thing, just because something that we really wanna focus on improving is this drop-off rate. Um, one of the recommendations that we're gonna talk about is there's been a lot of discussion about call, call to action, call to action, and how to get people um, to, to make a, a decision about calling Tim or doing something um, and looking for more information about Wallingford. So we would recommend that whatever uh, social media promotion message or any, any form of messaging has to have a call to action and would likely drive them to the landing page because the landing page itself, in terms of the user flow, if they follow it all the way um, through, they end up kind of in the headspace of making that phone call. If, if it's a relevant, or, or not relevant, if it is a qualified lead. So that is the other thing we wanted to mention is that it needed to be um, a very targeted form of messaging. So. There needs to be a lot of discussion as to how to reach the businesses and the potential business owners that we need to so that this drop off rate can kind of decrease and we can see more phone numbers clicks.
Well, you can talk a lot faster than I can write. <laughs> I can repeat anything. <laughs> no, great, great job, Samantha. This is uh, good stuff. All right, so we've got a few takeaways that um, <laughs> we've uh, discussed here, probably more than a few. Um, but uh, all right. Well, I, I like the fact that now we've established some sort of a track record, right? So we now have two months to compare. We, we now we can continue to take and measure ourselves against um, you know, the activity that's out there. Um, all right, any, any questions, comments of Sam's report? All right, Sam, great job, thank you very much. And I think, um, have we managed to, to keep you on for another couple of weeks or another month? Actually, or? I, yeah. Yeah, okay, <laughs> all right, good, <laughs> very good. All right, so Callum, Sam, great, great report. Um, Brenna, can you, yeah, college right. outreach, I can, I'm sorry, can Sam. Can I dip out, um, I gotta get on the road. Yeah, very good. Thank you, thank, everybody. Thank you very much. Um, hey, Brenda, can we just skip over college outreach for now? Um, honestly, yeah. I don't even have much to report. I reached out to the five community colleges. I sent follow-up emails, and I received nothing back from them. So okay. I have no report. Okay. That was a quick one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And frankly, we've already talked about the uh, Facebook with uh, the you know player changes, which was the next thing on the agenda. So um, anything else while we have the student marketing team on the line? committee members i wanted to mention um i know there has been talk about you guys hiring a part-time person to take over some of our responsibilities um i did like just want to bring up the, you'd like to apply for the job no i wanted to bring <laughs> up that i know personally i'm only here through the end of may i have a full-time internship starting in june and so i won't have the time for this okay. so i did want to bring that up as like a like if you want us to walk them through what we've been doing, hiring them sooner rather than later might be a smart bet uh, before you lose a couple of us in May. Yep, very good. Congratulations, by the way, that's great. Thank you. Yes, all right. Yeah, we're gonna be, uh, I think I mentioned Vera briefly in the past that Lynn, my secretary is retiring, so she is training her replacement as we speak. We wanted to get that done, so some stability in that spot um, before we, uh, got the part-timer, but it's all full speed ahead with the part-timer at this point. We got stability okay. in the shop, so. All right, well, good marketing team, SMT as we refer to you. Great job, have a great day, and uh, we'll be in touch regarding the next meeting. Hey, Mark, you wanna to try to set a meeting for two weeks from now while we got everybody here? Uh, yeah. I really think waiting a month is, uh, is, is too long, if it's okay, if you don't mind. That would put us at Monday, the, the 5th of April. This is a couple of weeks. Even even April the 12th, I think it's fine. The 12th might work better for me. I know on the 5th, I will be traveling in the morning, so. Uh, 12th's good for me too. Yeah, I'm okay. Callum, Shay, 12th. What was the date on that? April 12th, 8 a.m. That's fine with me. That works for me too. Okay. I'm sorry. What day of the week is that? Is that a Monday? Monday, yep. Yeah. yeah, that works. Okay. It's in the book. April 12th, 8 o'clock. All right. SMT, thanks very much. Great job as always. And uh, we'll be in touch. All right. Thank you. You guys can drop yeah. off. We're going to jump into the rest of our meeting. Yep. Thanks, guys. One second. Good group there. Yeah, no question. Yeah. We're, we're losing a good group there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but what they started, you know, just the infrastructure that's uh, in place, it's, it's really, gonna, really strong. It's going to take us a long way, I can tell you that. Yeah. <clears throat> I okay. see that Patricia has joined us. Good morning, Patricia. Good morning, guys. Morning. Morning. Okay, um, let's see. So the next thing on the agenda, Mark, is, is to just, just further explore Facebook digital as a digital channel. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I know we had all shared concerns, uh, and me kind of leading the chair about 
you know, the potential negative comments that could come through Facebook and the, you know, chastising and, um, and there's a part of me that just says, and it's probably, it's probably my Irish heritage, my stubbornness says, there's, there's got to be a way. There's got to be a way to take and utilize what is the largest channel, you know, for, for local communication. Um, so then I started saying, well, maybe it's the type of messages we put on it is, is that they're more informative as opposed to educational. We talked about, you know, the center street parking lot. We said, oh, we should educate the people more using Facebook. And then we said, oh my God, what a Pandora's box that could open up, right? So, but what if, what if we used Facebook for softer stuff? Um, you know, more informative stuff. If, if we use a Facebook channel to talk about uh, something that's going on at WCI, it's the holiday stroll, it's the, you know, they're, they're more neutral. Yep, um, those are good. Those are good, that, and um, and also, you know, welcome this new business. It's 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 another uh, it's another opportunity to highlight, um, you know, either welcome new businesses or highlight businesses if, uh, particularly those who do something to engage with the town or to engage with EDC or to engage with Hubcap. You know, um, these are people who are the companies who are being part of the community and participating in things and that's something mm -hmm. to highlight they're soft they're informative and they also put your name out there that's exactly what i had in mind thoughts from other committee members you know the other thing is i think inevitably uh, and i think you absolutely are on the right track in terms of choosing the type of message you want that particular uh, and facebook to promote uh, and the other thing is inevitably you're going to get probably get, I don't care what soft ball you throw onto that page. You're going to get somebody who uh, just has an ax to grind. And I think we have to just be disciplined not to respond to a lot of that, those comments and let them just, they'll probably go away on their own. Um, and just be aware of that and not react to that. I agree, Rob. And it's something we can always turn it off too. I mean, if we never can, turn it on. It feels as if we've, we've left an opportunity Unexpected, yeah, but. you could take you could take the post down if it gets bad, um, and then it just disappears. Um, but if it goes the wrong way, turn off commenting and you know just leave it at that. But it will it will happen whether you engage or not. Right. It's you know it, it's the angry mob with uh, with torches and pitchforks. It's just what's going to happen. Yep. I see it. you. If you scroll through any of the Wallingford forums on Facebook, you'll quickly lose taste for wanting to have anything on Facebook. <laughs> it's it just really gets ugly. People are people are people. Yeah. So. So I think um, am I hearing that uh, you know we're willing to do something like this? You know. Like Anthony said, you know, welcome new businesses, uh, messages that are more neutral. The company does something great. You know, Albrecht Steel brings in a new, you know, they expand something. You know, All Next does something, you know, a community event. I mean, you know, soft, soft stuff like that. And, we'll, you know, enter, enter the Facebook world that way and then just kind of see where it takes us. And if we don't like the direction, we, we can shut it off. That's that's exactly correct. We have to stick our toe in the water and um, and just and, and go with it and see and play it by ear and see how things go. But I think your messaging is is the correct approach for sure. If, if we put up something on a business um, and they start bashing the business, for instance, Amazon, Amazon has Facebook pages that just totally crush Amazon. The employees themselves are working there to talk so poorly about Amazon. Um, that's going to be an issue because it's going to be on our site, them talking bad about companies in our, in our town. So we'll just have to be really aware if we do put up something yeah. of a, what the response is to it. I mean, about a business in town. Of course, of course yeah. Patricia, they could always choose not to work there too. So, but anyways. Oh, of course, of course, but they don't. And, and they, and this is what they do. And that site exists, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. No, good point. Um, I, I always, I just, I always find it amusing when people complain about their place of employment. Well, they, <laughs> they don't have to work there. Go someplace yeah, else. It's, it's ignorant too, because anybody could look on there and just fire them. You know, I mean, what, what are you yeah, doing? Right. Yeah. Well, I think 
what, what's the old saying? It's it's hard to reason, reason with unreasonable people. So yes. you know, it's just people yeah. getting that spot. But that's a, that's a great point, Patricia, that uh, we certainly, if we're well-intentioned that we mention something that a business has done, say a community service event of some sort, and then someone comes on and starts bashing the company, you know, as Anthony said, we can take it down and then just, you know, end the conversation. But um, all right, well, I think I'm hearing that there's comfort in, in at least exploring. Yep. All right, so, in, you know, in, after the last meeting, I said, well, Facebook is dead, but um, so let's say it's on life support. It's on, uh, we're, we're going to, we're going to tiptoe uh, uh, with that. And I did uh, mention earlier that the, the player trade, I hope uh, you folks don't mind uh, me doing that without uh, discussing with the entire committee, but just between us, uh, Jack was um, not, um, not moving the sales navigator effort fast enough uh, for my liking. Um, we had several meetings between these meetings, just one-on-ones and um, actually two-on-ones because Chandler, Jack, myself, and each time I, I said, okay, where are we? What's the next step? I mean, we, it's, you know, we just, it wasn't moving quick enough. So Brenna, uh, in my opinion, I think we would all agree that frankly, that is, you know, she's, she's been a superstar. It just everything we've given her, she's done timely. So I, I looked at it and said, I, I feel as if I've got my, you know, one of, one of our best players, but I've, I've got her not in the best position. I mean, I want my best player you know, in the best position. And, and uh, Brenna, um, we challenged her with that. I talked with her, I talked with David Tomchik. I'm not sure why he's not on the call today, but I talked with David Tomchik about it. Um, then I, uh, um, he spoke with the students first and uh, they were both amenable to the to the trade. And so then I spoke with each of them individually with, with Tomchik and um, we're off and running. So it slows us down a little bit because Brenna now is on a learning curve, um, but, she feels that it's going to give her a great opportunity um, just because it exposes her to something she's not familiar with. So she says, hey, it gives me the opportunity to learn something about cultivating and, uh, and mining business opportunities, which can only be beneficial for me and I go forward. So that's just the way she thinks, which is uh, great stuff. So anyway, that uh, that's the player trade. I mean, an example of it is Brenna made a change while we were discussing. <laughs> I yeah. mean, that's Brenna. I mean, yeah. She, yeah. she's probably the star of our whole group and and we have a very good group so yep yeah she's amazing yeah i agree okay um there was a lot there <laughs> a lot there so i'm glad uh you're willing to meet in two weeks as opposed to waiting at, waiting for a month because uh there's just um, a month is too long given all the activity that we've got um and again, for your ratification, I do have the mayor's uh, nod and I'm going to put the job description together. I actually have it already for the part-timer, but this part-time position, um, even though it's an EDC thing, I should bring it up in the next EDC meeting again, but this is going to be a marketing focus. So it's it's not just digital channels, but it's mar it's marketing the town, um, it's, it's outreach, it's going to be that type of focus. So it certainly needs the complete support of this committee because um, this is gonna be the person that all these different things when, you know, same isn't traf tracking traffic any longer. And, um, uh, you know, we're, we're looking to message, uh, you know, more frequently and, and we just we just need someone who's, who's, uh, who's focusing on doing that. So it is in it's fact been, approved. It's while, to, Tim, okay. it's been a while since I talked to the mayor regarding this is is he fully on board now with the way we're going in messaging the town i would i would say it on board as the mayor can get when it comes to any use of technologies okay so yeah i mean i, I will say unequivocally he has such confidence in the economic development commission he, he really does he, he he will you know challenge and then you know he backs off quick and says listen I trust you guys. Do what you think you need to do. He, he's so. I, I give him a lot of credit for that. He obviously despises technology. It's not that he just doesn't like it; he despises it. Right. right. Uh, but he allows us to use it yeah. to uh, you know to forward you know the, the you know efforts of the community. So. Okay. Good. Yeah. yeah no. No pushback at all. So. 
You had town council up there on the agenda. Is that, am I looking at that right or? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, we're, we're quickly running out of time to get any exposure to the student marketing team in front of the town council. And, um, and we've, we've talked about it. I did talk to Vinny Cervoni, chairman of the town council. Uh, he would welcome the opportunity to have the kids come in, um, you know, virtually, of course, but uh, to have them, you know, maybe each do a, I don't know if they can all do it or not. It would maybe take too long, but do, do some sort of a short snippet, um, even if it's nothing more than an introduction. Uh, but I, I just, it, it, I'm not exactly sure how it would play out if we, if we took 15, 15 minutes of the council's agenda uh, at an upcoming meeting. Maybe we need 20, but um, I guess in, in the beginning, I said I'd just like to do that for them because I I like them to I'd like to see it on their it's a resume builder for them and uh, you know we started off with you know Tarek Farid was hot and heavy with this whole thing and he fizzled out like a like a Roman candle so um, I, I I saw I feel as if we have mentioned Tarek to them in terms of exposure and we haven't delivered I'd like to at least deliver on the town council exposure um, so hope I just want to open that up to thoughts. Yeah, from my perspective, as, as you know, we've talked about it several times. I think we've got to get in front of the council. It's just a matter of what is the right time. And we're running out of time if you'd like the students to be involved. And, right. and I think that's important, not only for their perspective, but also for our perspective, because the council will see the quality of marketing that we're looking at, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, the quality of people who are involved. In, and, and there are quality students involved with this. So um, when's the next meeting? And we're talking about in April or May. I mean, it can't be later in May. That's for well, sure. I think we need to we need to do an April meeting. They meet every two weeks, which is the good thing. Okay. One, one of the April meetings is about budget. We don't want to be part of that. So um, if if we're on board, then I will schedule officially schedule with uh, with the council to get on the agenda, and then uh, we'll go from there. Yeah. You know, I'm, 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 not sure they, I'm not sure if they ask you timing, but I, I think you got to give it every bit of a half an hour. <laughs> every bit of that okay you know what might not be a bad idea is um you know these these guys are after all marketing students they could put together a uh, a powerpoint that just kind of does some highlight uh the team you know what their what their their course of study is in marketing um talk about some of the problems that we faced and some of our goals and what they did you know, I mean, it, it really tells a good story and you could have a lot of visual uh, slides on, you know, this is what it looked like before. This is what it looks like now. Here's our uh, our LinkedIn page. Here's an example of some of the advertising we did. You could easily put together a, um, it doesn't even have to be narrated, but you could put together a uh, almost just a, a bunch of slides with some stills that kind of show you know, and that really catches people attention. You could talk to, about things till you're blue in the face. People like pictures and images. So that might not be a bad, uh, you know, right. way to kind of almost promote what it is that they accomplished because they accomplished a lot. I mean, there's a lot of different areas. Well, I like, I like that idea because what it does then it sets it within a time frame. Yeah. The trouble with just bringing up talking to Anthony, let's talk to Joe, let's talk to Mark. It, all of a sudden, it be, uh, something that should be taking at the very most a half an hour has gotten into be an hour. You know, yep. that thing. whereas if you do it yeah. the way you've suggested, you've got a time frame and it's, yep. it's worked within that. I like you that. Could, you could even have a slide that has a quote, you know, from from you or from the mayor, um, uh, or you know, people that have really kind of been engaged in in the projects. You know, just kind of touting it. Uh, you know, how effective it's been. Mm -hmm. You know, what's what it's meant to the town. You know, a comment of uh, from you, Tim, on you know all this effort. You know, for a very very <laughs> low price, it's almost like we stole from them for what you got. Um, you know, I think that's that would be uh, impactful, and it's something honestly that you could use again. You could put it up on the uh, on the town's uh, on the EDC blog. You know, these guys, these these great kids did this, and it's something that they these guys can reference in their uh, in their resumes as as part of their body of work. Tim, who do you think would would be good to uh, quarterback this, Callum or Callum and Brenna, or who, who do you think would be best to get that together? I think I would talk to uh, Professor Tomchik and um, you know just get his uh, his take on it. Um, 
you know, building a PowerPoint and then being someone who's going to deliver it um, is, is uh, maybe we have one of the students, you know, deliver it. So uh, let me talk to, let me talk to Tom Chick and see what, uh, what he feels. I, I sense that some of these kids are starting to feel time pressure with studies and so forth. So yeah, uh, it's a matter of not only who may be the best, but who's got the time and energy <laughs> to do it. So. Okay, so we'll plan for sometime in April, and you'll advise us of that. You got it. Yeah, because I believe their finals are typically the first couple of weeks of May. Yeah, probably. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then the last thing on the agenda is um, discussion on search engine optimization. And um, we did, um, Patricia, that's something that you had brought up last meeting. So we did ask um, our vendor to uh, uh, to give us some insight as to SEO. And what, what they had shared is because of the, because it's a, um, and this is their opinion, but because it's a municipal site, um, they think, they say right now, of course, Callum and, and Samantha have built the site, so it is search engine optimized. So the question becomes, how often do you go in and start changing keywords or doing, you know, you know doing things to make it more search engine optimized? Their opinion, um, and I, I, again, our vendor, um, this is this is a business opportunity for them. So for them to say, you know, if we look at it every six months, they think that's more than enough. It's not something that they said, you know, you give, to give us a retainer to have us going in there weekly to do something, it's a municipal site. We really don't think it's a good way to spend your money. If we were to go in and, and you do some, you know, do some tracking and take an initiative out, you know, every, every six months or so, um, they feel that that would be, um, you know, sufficient. So I just throw that out uh, because you've asked me to look into it. What is the cost of them going into doing it? Be it they have, or weekly? Yeah, they, they have, an, well, they have an hourly rate. So it's, uh, what's 135 bucks an hour or something like that, that they uh -huh. charge us to do stuff. So, um, I don't know if they actually sent me a quote on the SEO because I just wanted to talk about frequency and concepts. So, uh, yeah. But. Is search search engine optimization <clears throat> would would seem to be more of a, I'm going to say an inverted exponential curve in the sense that you put a lot of effort into it initially, and then you get a lot of diminishing returns uh, once you uh, have, op have done a lot of the optimization, unless you're making major changes to the page. So, unless maybe they feel that. Um, um, you know, once they start to see the, the curve flattening a little bit, there doesn't, it doesn't need to be uh, frequented as often. And I, I'm, I'm assuming that's what they're inferring. Um, yeah, but this so. is also, this is also, we can see that they should be able to give us reports where we can see the back end, where we can see how many people have frequented, what pages, how often. So that would be a good start for us just to get those reports. Um, second, this is a company that's seen almost, no viewers on our site and has never even recommended uh, search engine optimization. So that's, that's concerning to me. I, I, I want to add to that, Patricia, because it sounds like their view of a, when they, when they referred, which you just quoted them, they call this a municipal page. Um, and I think they inferred that it's really not meant to, it's, it's, it's meant to just show some minimal amount of information about the town, where to find the dog catcher's phone number or something like that. And, and our, our interpretation is we're trying to turn it into something completely different. So I think that either that we need to make sure that they understand we're on the same page and what our intent of the website is compared to what their intent is or find another, find another vendor. I couldn't I agree. They don't do search engine. I'm sorry, Mark. They don't do search engine. Um, it's not part of the contract. They'll do it in addition to get paid. Right. But, but it's still the intent of what they envision a, quote, municipipal website to be versus what we... No, no, I totally... To yeah. Totally agree with you, Rob. Totally agree with you. But yeah. to them, that's looking at it. So just something additional, you know, that we have to do. It's not something that they should have been looking at all along. Yeah, but that statement told me that it's it's their attitude towards us. We're just municipal. Yep. And, and I, I couldn't agree with Rob anymore. Yep, I agree. We we can't have that. <laughs> yeah, they should have been telling us months ago, years ago. You guys only get fifty something views. You guys only get this is ridiculous, you know. They never they bothered. Should, they should be driving us. Yeah, they should be exactly. picking up the phone and calling us. Yeah, and, exactly. and looking at the metrics and reporting that to us. Exactly. Yeah, um, it depends on what your 
you know, your SEO targets are, um, but you should at least baseline what the SEO value is. And, and, you know, you can get re monthly reports on, on how well it's doing. Obviously you want it to grow. Um, so that's kind of the direction you want to go in. And to your point, Anthony, it would be interesting to know there are a lot of other towns with websites. It'd be interesting to know a benchmark is, is benchmarking just our, um, our particular website, but you can't, if you do that in a vacuum, um, you get a number, but you don't know whether that's a industry acceptable, where, how, it, how it relates to other towns and where we are in terms of our effectiveness. So it would be interesting to know some of those metrics and be able to compare them to, uh, to other towns throughout the state. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, guys, I got to jump. I yeah. got to get ready for my next. Um, so as as I do as well. Yeah, we're, yeah. Here. And we're okay. all in this, the same boat. Yep. Okay. Okay. Well, we've run over. Anthony, thank you very much. Thank you. Anthony. Um, I will consider SEO an open item. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. More to come. And um, are we good to go, uh, Mr. Chairman? I think we are. Jim, are you still on? I think you dropped off a while ago. Okay, yeah. that's then I want to thank everyone for attending today and uh, we'll see you soon. In a right, couple have weeks. A good Take day. care, everybody. Have a great right. week. Thank yeah. you. Bye now.